What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of The Long Dark. My name is Splattercat and I'm here today trying to get ready for the ravine. That's pretty much what we're pushing for right now. We're definitely exerting some force in some direction, but as of right now, we probably won't be able to go to the ravine right this second. I think the reason why is that we need to gather up some more calories before we get out on the road again to sort of bung nicka bung nicka bung nicka bung nicka mode. And so the ravine is off that way. I have been to the ravine, but I've never seen anything past it. And I've only seen like the first five minutes of the ravine. It's kind of like this weird little little puzzly zone that you have to navigate without falling to your death. It's an interesting concept, and I think the developers did a pretty good job with it. I enjoyed the zone while I was there, although I did have to rapidly retreat in my last playthrough because I thought I might die, since I had to stay out all night in a blizzard, and it just got really, really nasty. So hopefully things like that don't go wrong with this playthrough. But for right now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to stockpile enough food and stockpiling enough food, exact same thing as stockpiling enough food. I'm just putting a little bit of extra flair in there with the SH sound. So anyways, I'm going to stockpile a little bit of food before we go off to the ravine because it is important and I want to make sure we have enough water, we have enough food, and we have enough warmth to make it all the way over there. So we'll probably be hiking out with a pretty good amount of stuff in our bag. So let's go for another fishing trip, shall we? Our normal shack is right on over here. Not to be confused with an abnormal shack, which obviously starts making free throws and all that kind of fun stuff. We're going to bust a hole in this BZ right here, and that should take us about an hour. And once we break the ice, I hate those icebreakers. You ever go to, like, you know after you get hired, you always have to go to, like, an orientation for the company or something like that? And it's always just like, ugh. I hate icebreakers. Icebreakers are the worst. I'd be like, well, person I'm never going to see again for my entire life. Let me go through all of the social implications of getting to know you before, you know, never seeing you again. It's just something that I've never enjoyed. Like, can we just, like, skip this part? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with talking to people. You know, I can break my own ice. Thank you. Thank you, boss lady. I don't know. Those situations are always awkward and weird, and they always pair you up with somebody that, like, doesn't want to talk to you. Everybody else gets, like, the partners that work out great. You're like, oh, it figures. It figures. Let's go grab the starting fire. Well, we're not really grabbing anything right now. We're just waiting for a bar to fill up. There it is. Okay, and so our fire starting stu our fire starting skill is up. And so the things that I tried to do before we started this episode off essentially is I just farmed up some wood so that you guys wouldn't have to sit around and wait for me to get that done. We'll throw some fuel in there. That should give us enough time, I think, to fish out this little hole right here. Let's go for, yeah, four hours. That should be fine. We've got more than enough time to get it done. That's like three and a half hours how much we had on the fire. So at four, it gives us 30 minutes of being cold. But if we can catch a couple bass and a couple of whitefish, I think we should be in a really, really solid state to get going and move to the next map. Now, whether we're going to stay there remains to be seen. But I think that this is kind of a delicate operation. It's going to be a little bit risky. And I think that's what the series needs right now. Because at the moment, we've basically become self-sustainable in this area. That's incredible that we actually didn't catch that much. What did we get here? We got a small mouth. Wow. Bad luck right there. But then again, sometimes the fish won't bite. When the fish won't bite and you feel so low. Boo -doo -doo -doo. Boo -doo -doo -doo. I've always liked that song for some reason. I have no idea why, but every time I hear the fish won't bite, I think of that song and it makes me happy. Every single time. I don't know if it's, it's the bass line. I think that's what I lock it down to. It's nothing else other than the bass line. It's all about the bass. It's just that boo doo doo doo. Boo -doo -doo -doo. Then he comes in with that. Hey, it's got like that little spinny thing on the top of the drums. Oh shit! So we got a wolf over here. We're gonna have to wander around that just a little bit because he is out and on the prowl. Now I can say honestly that if we were able to whack another wolf right now, it might be beneficial. It would be another three thousand calories, which is an entire day's worth. However, I don't know if I want to drop bullets on him right now. We've got plenty of food. We've been taking out fish left and right. Like, seriously, we are the boogeyman that fish talk about before they put their children to sleep at night. If we sprint around wide enough, I think we should avoid any violent acts against our canine friend over here. Just keep an eye on him, though, because every now and again they aggro, and you're just like, what are you doing right now? And they're like, I'm trying to eat you because I'm a wolf. It's a thing that I do. It is a thing that I enjoy doing. Every single day I go out and do this all day, every day. And I'd be like, aren't you supposed to have friends or something? He's like, whoa, soft spot, soft spot. This conversation has gone too far. I had a pack once, and then some terrible things happened, the type of stuff that you would see on the Oxygen Network or maybe on Lifetime, but I don't want to talk about it here because, you know, grown wolves don't cry. So if you could just go about your business... Stop worrying about me. Maybe worry about yourself a little bit. I think we can both live in harmony. Can I can I bite your thigh right there for just a second? I'm like, no, you can't bite my thigh there for just a second. I need that. 
that's a thing that's part of my body that I require in order to get everything done that I do on a daily basis. You'd be like, what? Like, sitting on a computer and talking to internet people? I'd be like, yeah, I need my thigh for that. Oh, my God. Speaking of which, I threw my back out yesterday. That was the worst feeling ever. It seems to be okay today. But, oh, my God, I couldn't walk last night. It was weird. Like, I go to the gym every day, and I do my workouts, and I go for my jog and everything, and I've never injured myself at the gym. I've pulled a muscle slightly when I did an exercise wrong or when I got lazy and I was just trying to, like, mash out my sets or whatever. But, like, I got up off the couch last night to get a Coke and threw my back out. It was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen, especially given the fact that I do a lot of physical activity, and I lift weights a lot, and I go to the gym a lot. And there's lots of things that – those are big-ass fish, by the way. Like, they really sort of – don't properly, I guess, animate the size of these fish when they're in your inventory. But when you drop them on the floor, you're like, that's a big-ass fish. I'd be proud of myself if I went fishing and grabbed that bad boy. That thing right there is what we look for. How many hours of daylight we have left? Not much. Okay, well. Problem here is that we don't have much firewood either. I guess I'll... We'll have to spend a little bit of time getting some more firewood or something. Because we're in a bad situation right now with regards to our fire starting situation. So we've got cedar. Let's go ahead and throw that on right now. The fire should last for an hour once we get it up and going. I always try and keep a good supply of cedar around because it's like explosively flammable. I don't know if you've ever burned cedar before, but there's a lot of softwoods out there that have kind of like this microcellular structure in them. And they burn very, very hotly and very, very quickly, but they don't last very long. And I can remember a couple camping trips I went on where we were just grabbing like random logs that were laying around at other campsites where people like leave and they just leave their wood. That's good camping etiquette. If you have extra firewood and you don't need it, leave it at your campsite next to the fire pit so that other people can come along and they can use it if they need it or if they can't find firewood. And so anyways, we went through and we started like grabbing other people's firewood that they had left behind. And there was some in there that were just like, you could tell it was a piece of redwood or it was a piece of something. And my god, it burned up almost instantly, and it burned so hot. But at the same time, it only burned for like eight minutes before you had to put another log in. You're like, wow, that is a really, really short duration burn right there. It's all about the bang, not about the experience. It's a firework, if you will. Okay, well, let's get these all cooked. Once we get all this food cooked, we'll go ahead and we'll take stock of everything that we have on us. I think I should probably cook all the stuff that's on the floor right now. If we have any extra time, what I'll try and go through and do is make ourselves some more water. But I think that our survival gear is pretty good right now to go into the next zone. I'm pleased with the way that our clothing is working out. It's been doing curls. It's been making sure that it's getting the tries, the buys, the lats, and all that good stuff. And so since it's working out well for us, I think that if we take our current gear set and we go into the ravine, we shouldn't run into too much trouble. The last time I attempted this, it was on A, a higher difficulty setting, and then B, what is this right here? Let's eat the white fish for right now because the white fish is very, very weighty but at the same time does not restore many calories. And so I'd rather bring the bass along if I can. Okay, we got that right there. 381 on that fish. I still think that the eating in this game is a little bit overtuned. Like, I, I just don't fathom how you could eat maybe five or six fish a day and still not feel fed. It's just, it's a lot. So we got a couple of smallmouth bass right there. It looks like some of the calories burned off, weirdly enough. Let's grab these other fish over here. Alright, we got two hours left until this fire is up, so that should be plenty to get our gruesome task done of cleaning this little guy out. Actually, cleaning a fish isn't so bad. Cleaning a deer and some of that other stuff can get a little bit gnarly with the sights and the smells and all that fun stuff. Reminds me of when I was a kid. Actually, my friend's dad got in trouble because he hung a deer up in his front yard. We lived in the suburb we lived in the suburbs, and so apparently this is looked down upon. But anyways, he gutted a deer in his garage and he needed you know how you gotta hang it up upside down, you gotta let it bleed out for a while before you can actually like clean it, get the meat out and then take the fur and everything like that so that you can cook it without the meat being all grindy and gross. So anyways, put the deer up in the front yard, hang it from the tree with a bucket underneath it. Police came out and thought it was funny as hell. They didn't say that he like had to take it down because like they got it. Like I think all the police officers were hunters and stuff too. But at the same time, there were little kids coming home from school and things like that, and Bambi was definitely strung up along the wall. It is what it is. I don't know. I could see both sides of the whole thing. I mean, if it was my deer, I'd be like, listen, this needs to get done. Ultimately, he ended up moving it and hanging it up in the garage from one of the rafters. He had to clean out a bunch of stuff, though, so it was easier to do it in the front yard. But, eh. The police, like, came out, and they thought it was humorous, and they thought it was funny. They weren't, like, dicks about it or anything, but... Oh, wow, our thirst is really, really bad right now, but yeah. That's what I always think of whenever I, th whenever somebody talks about, like, cleaning a deer or anything like that. That's the story that comes to mind. We got three kilograms of water right there. We're going to need some extra kilos right now. So I would say to bring along maybe 350 
should probably do it for our next adventure. I don't want to bring too much, but then again, I don't know when we're going to get a lineup on... What time is it? We have nine hours of darkness left. Let's throw down on... Let's work on our jacket a little bit. Because I think it's good to make sure that I put like one or two hours work into this every single day. And then the next thing you know, about the time we approach the end of the game, we should have everything we need all lined up. You know what I've wanted to do lately? I've wanted to play Fantasy Star 4 again. That was my first RPG. I don't know if you guys... Hold on. Cancel that. I don't know what just happened, but it was weird. That's not... I don't want to craft another one. I want to put in like two and a half hours right here. There we go. I think all that it did is it put in 30 minutes, but I got paranoid and I thought that maybe I was using up too many wolf hides. Either way, if you put in like two and a half, three hours a day on this thing, it'll be done before you know it. The only downside is that you're in the dark in your house and it's kind of creepy. If the door didn't have a lock, I don't know if I could sleep in this place. It'd be freaky. I do have a gun though. That would make it a little bit better. I might set up a noise trap or something. There are a lot of dead people around. That's the thing that I'm taking into consideration right now. There are a serious amount of dead folks around here. And I'm not so positive that it was nature that killed them. They're dead inside houses. And it's not even cold in here. But the guy over in the corner who's dead, he's all frosty like it is cold in here. And so, I don't know. I just don't know. Things are not adding up right now. The mental arithmetic is not doing its job. The numbers, the ones, and the twos are not where I would like them to be. Oh, the dead guy's not here right now. Okay, well, never mind. That's weird. I thought that he would be in here, but I guess he's gone now. How cold is it outside? Because I don't want to start this hike. Oh, yeah, would you look at that? All nice and cleaned up. So we're encumbered right now. And I would really, really like to avoid that. I think we can get this weight under our allotment, maybe. We are carrying cedar and we are carrying fur. But I think that's just a wise idea anyways, given the fact that we could freeze before we ever make it to the other location. Let's take this stuff downstairs, and we'll see if we can get down below 30 kilos. If we can't, then we'll start to make some concessions as to what we want to bring along on our wilderness adventure. But if we can get under 30 kilos, we'll set out right now, and that's actually pretty fun. I was hoping we'd get it done in this episode. Let me put things back inside this drawer. Let's start out here. So there's 1.2. We've got... One right there. We're going to cut it close. It's going to be real, real close, isn't it? Okay, well, we could throw the sewing kit in there. Do I have anything else that I'm carrying around that I don't? I've got the intestines right there. Those are probably going to have to be dropped because eh, we don't really have much laying around. Although the intestines on the floor are not good for house guests. When somebody walks into your house and they just see a bunch of entrails laying on the floor, I it would worry me. I'd be like, entrails in the middle of the floor? Like... I feel like I might die. Are those human? That's the only real question that I have for you. Are those human? Let's eat the white fish, and I think that'll get us below. Come on, white fish. Do your job. Oh, we missed it by 0.04. That's very, very unfortunate, which is kind of funny because 0.04. But anyways, unfortunate? I don't know. I thought it was vaguely funny. Not like super funny, but still kind of like, oh, look, that lined up kind of. I can maybe make a joke about it, and people probably won't lynch me or something. So we got point one right there. The water... Uh, I'll probably bring those tablets along with me because it's a really, really good idea. Instead, let's just drop the sewing kit. I don't think we're going to be using that anytime soon. Let's check what the weather's like, and we'll try and rest this off and make sure that we leave with optimal weather because if it's like minus 37 outside, it's not going to work for us. It's minus 12, so that's too cold for us to leave right now. So instead, in the better interest of our survival... I'm not going to put in time on the coat because I think that'll make us tired. Instead, I think we're just going to sleep it off. Let's sleep for three hours right now. And there should be 14 hours of daylight given the location that we're at right now. And so yesterday, I slept like an entire chunk of the day away. You measure days in chunks. Sounds like a blizzard rolled in, unfortunately. This may turn into one of those things where I'm just waiting for the storm to go away. We might get caught out overnight. I'd like to be through the ravine and out the other side. By the time we get to morning, that's my ultimate goal, but I can't promise that it's going to happen like that. It's still minus 16. Damn, no such luck. We can't leave with the weather like this. It's 100%. We'll be frozen by the time. We won't be dead, but we'll be hitting the upper echelons of being frozen by the time we get to the outer bounds of the zone. And so given that time allotment in mind, we have to think about it in the frame of that reference. So we have essentially like 20 minutes to work with, maybe 15 minutes to work with if we've got double tick cold going upwards. Single tick, we got a little bit more time to play with. We'll give it a couple more hours. There's eight hours of daylight left. 
I would really like to be the hell out of here by now. I think it's probably still windy though. I thought I heard a little bit of like whooshing and, you know, whipping and whining. Okay, well if it's only minus 10 right now, that's not quite as bad. And it looks like the temperature is going up. Let's see if we can ride this out. I'm going to make for the side zone. And since you guys have seen this walk before, I'm just going to go out I'm going to go out there by my lonesome, I guess, and I'll see you guys on the opposite end. How you do everybody? All right, guys and gals, we are back. I had to go around the bridge right here because there's a wolf guarding the bridge, and I already got bit by one wolf on my way out here. I shot him, but it was weird. It's like if you fire the shot in close proximity to the animation where the wolf grabs you, it cancels out the shot even though you lose the bullet. And so, for example, on the shot that I took, it clearly I shot the wolf, and it even did the little blood splatter thing, but he still jumped on me and bit me, which is weird considering one shot should kill him on this difficulty. But anyways, I don't know, just a little thing that I've noticed is the animation for entering a little combat minigame when the wolf grabs you it tends to supersede gunshots even though you shot them like right in the face it'll cancel the shot even though the shot went off and then go into the combat animation instead i think that something needs to be looked at but we are zoning out right now i think that our cold is looking a little bit better so finally actually we're above freezing right now i don't know if it was two degrees celsius i feel like i would still probably be pretty cold but we've got a lot of gear on right now so i think it should work out for us let's get riding and we'll see what we can accomplish out here the ravine is a little bit tricky so it's very, very easy to get caught out in the ravine if you've never been here before and you don't know how to navigate it properly. It's not a big zone, but it is a zone that requires a little bit of finesse and a little bit of paying attention to work your way through. And I've only made it through about half of the ravine, so honestly bear with me right now if I do anything incredibly stupid, but we'll try and figure this out. So the ravine largely is just this area where there's a train track that goes around a ravine, you guessed it. And the train has actually derailed and fallen over. Now they don't really explain what happened to the train. I suppose that its you know thought process was derailed or whatever its train of thought was derailed. I don't know. I don't think that's going to work out right now. But, oh, the temperature looks like it might drop on us again. Okay, so the temperature is back down. That means we need to work quickly. Either that or we need to put ourselves in close proximity of a fire sometime soon. Still, the way that you want to get through here is there's a lot of wolves out here and random things, so watch out. There's a lot of trees that can sort of obscure your vision and make sure that they put their fangs deep inside of your fleece. Let's go check the train cart over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to cross this because there's going to be a waterfall right here. And the waterfall is actually impassable. There's nothing you can really do about it. So over here, we should find some debris, as I recall. Maybe. There may not even be debris. I don't know. Yes, debris, are you over here? I love debris cheese. Debris cheese is amazing. It's got wood matches. Those actually are useful because I've been going through a lot of them as a fire source. A little bit of scrap metal right there, too, which is always nice to come around. Because honestly, typically, you can only acquire that by breaking down your own stuff. And I don't feel like having a breakdown right now. All the things we have, I'd prefer to keep them intact and in one piece. So anyways, ooh, temperature's dropping pretty sharply right now. All right, dropped by about 7 degrees. We can work with it. Let's walk down this little hill right here. I've never actually checked the waterfall at this point for any loot or any bodies, but we could take a look. There's nothing over here. I just like to be thorough about this stuff. This seems like a good place where we could camp, though, if we had to. Definitely thinking that's a decent plan, although I would never recommend sleeping on any water source in real life, especially a flowing water source like a river. Even if you think that it's frozen, flash floods and things like that are very, very odd and fickle. And while most of my experience is relegated to desert survival situations, still, I'd feel sketchy about it. I'd feel sketchy about it. Somebody else could probably overrule me right there if they're used to, you know, studying things out in the freezing cold winters, but... I don't know. Yeah, there's a bunny right there. Anybody want to play shoot a bunny? I don't want to shoot a bunny right now. I like bunnies. Bunnies make me happy and they remind me that there's frivolity in the world. Especially since I'm almost dead right now, like wandering through the middle of nowhere eating fish and all kinds of other ludicrous things. What's so? I don't know what's so ludicrous about eating a fish, so I think we have to cross over there. Because if we go over here, definitely getting colder right now. If we go to this side, yeah, I'm pretty sure... That's not navigable. So, if we cut across, it looks like there's another tunnel over that way. Got a deer carcass. I did, like, I looted the wolf before I actually came over here, so that's a plus. Still, let's eat a little bit of that meat right there. It might give us a tiny bit of clearance for getting some, yeah, like, that'll work out perfectly. In fact, we'll get one kilogram of meat off the deer. We only have five hours of daylight left. 
which means that if there ever was a time for us to go out and forage firewood and things like that, now would be that time. I would also strongly suggest finding a place where the wind will not be a problem. So if we can eliminate the wind chill, that will also take a lot of the stress off of us for staying up all night in the cold. We've got a backpack over here with a candy bar. Yes, you can use this. I agree. We've got a frozen corpse right here. She's like, I can use this. I'd be like, no, the frozen corpse, don't use that. Oh, man, this is sketchy as hell. All right. Highly not recommended. Like, oh, my God, not recommended. Don't do this. Even if you're not in a survival situation, do not do this. Jesus. Worst plan ever. I always remind people. Sometimes people are like, oh, you just have no sense of adventure. I'd be like, no, I have a sense of adventure. I just know stories, too. When you hang out with wilderness people, you hear wilderness stories of people doing stuff like that for picture opportunities, falling to their death. It happened at Yosemite a while back. There was a bunch of, there was a family from, they weren't from the United States, but they were a family from out of the country that came, like, on a wilderness adventure to Yosemite or whatever. And they got washed down the falls out there because they were trying to take, like, a picture that was off the beaten trail. And one of them slipped and pulled the rest of them in, and they never even recovered the bodies. The water beat them all just to goo, essentially. She's like, nope, don't do it. Don't do it. Is a picture worth killing your entire family over? <laughs> like, seriously. It seems like it's extreme, but it's true. There's a little bit of scrap metal over here. I'm going to grab that. Cold is looking a little bit gnarly. But I think if we make for the tunnel off on the other side of the map... Or off for the other side of the map. I said over because I was thinking overpass for some reason. But off to the other side of the map. I think if we can make it to the tunnel, we'll be in a really, really good spot. Is there anything over these hills right here? Because I get the feeling that this is kind of a ruse. They want you to pay attention to the trail ahead and not really take a look at anything that might be in the backcountry. I can't, like, prove it or promise it, but... I don't really want to break my ankles going over these rocks because I remember the game being very finicky about ankle breakages. Still... I do want to check all the corners. Oh, look, we've got something over here. What are these? Rishi mushrooms. Are those edible? Perhaps a large edible shelf mushroom. Oh, cool. Found mainly on coniferous trees. All right. I didn't know those were edible. I always thought that the texture of them was slightly edible feeling. Like, you, you feel them like, yeah, I could see those being boiled. I could see those being boiled and, like, thrown into a stew or something. Still, in California, it's generally... Not a good idea to eat mushrooms you find here because we have death caps and things like that that will kill you very, very swiftly if you eat them. You'll need a stomach pump and everything else in order to get yourself back up and running. So if we duck through, where is that tunnel at that we were seeing? It's minus seven right now, which means it might be time for us to bed down for the eve. I want the train tunnel. I think it's a very, very good idea to use this as a makeshift shelter for right now. It'll be cold, but it'll get rid of the wind, and I think that's a very, very important factor right now. So let's make for the tunnel. I've never seen this part of the zone right now, but would you look at that view? I really like the way that they've constructed the viewscapes in this game. Like, everything feels like it's natural. Something about the map in this game is very different from the map in other games, and I know some people don't like the graphics in this game. And while the graphics are simplistic, I still think that everything is rendered nicely, like I enjoy looking at it. We will probably camp in here, unless this is a transition to the next zone. I feel oddly about this cave. We should sweep it for threats, I... Th I thought I just heard a noise. I can't decide if that's my breathing or the breathing of something in here. Not good. We got four hours of daylight left, but we're almost frozen. All right. Well, let's just hang out for a minute. We've gone through a lot of calories right now. Oh, nope, never mind. There it goes. I don't know what's up with the weather right now, but it's being kind of spastic. The weather's being a little bit odd right now. So we're a tad fatigued. We've got a little bit of food on us right now. So hunger and thirst are not an issue. The chill will be, though. And I think it might be wise... Yeah, we just hit the freezing threshold, so I think it might be wise right now. It's minus one right now. We're running a risk. If the wolf hadn't bit me, I'd risk it in a heartbeat. Let's take 30 minutes for right now. We'll see if the temperature gets better. I doubt that it will. It's minus two now, and we're still freezing, huh? 
Let's go for an hour. I think it's risky, but it'll give us enough hardwood to get through the night. Okay, and so let's see if we can get this fire started right here. Can we not make a fire in here? Why can't we make a fire in here? There we go. That's what I wanted. Sometimes the game is weird about... Oh, it has to be closer to me. Okay. So let's do that. We got cardboard matches. Use the fire striker. I want to make sure this gets done lickety split. We'll cook up all the meat that I got while I was running from zone to zone. Like the little deer and the wolf meats and all that kind of stuff. So that we stay stocked up. That's actually a really, really good thing because it's a replenishment that we needed in our inventory. And so come on. Come on, baby. Light that fire. Oh, that's right. Well, never mind. I was going to make a reference. But you know what? I'm going to leave it alone for right now. For multiple reasons. We got that fire started. Yup. Okay, so the fire is started. We should be able to get our temperature taken care of now. It's going to take us a minute to get the air temp up, I think. But for right now, we have four fur firewood. I'm going to strongly suggest we throw that in there. And then with the remainder of the time... Oh, good, the cold is falling off. Awesome. We may have to sleep for the night, so I'm going to put down a bedroll real fast. There we go. There was an option back in the day to make a shelter. You could actually make a snow shelter, but I think they removed it. It might have been overpowered or maybe people were exploiting it or something. But I remember there being a snow shelter that you could use. And so we are very much on the precipice of survival right now. And this is truly what it means to essentially, like, throw things together and try and make it all work. We are freezing a little bit. I think it might be a good idea to track down a little bit more hardwood. Assuming that our condition doesn't fall off any further. I saw that 1% go right there and it made me a little panicky. And so we got a little bit more hardwood out. There we go. We got a 9 hour duration right now. Okay, and our cold is definitely taken care of. So what I'll do is let's drink... The hell was that? Why are you screaming? Do we burn? Fire is catching and all that fun stuff. Okay. Well, let's drink a little bit more water. Because obviously we got a fireplace so we can make some more for ourselves if we need to. Got raw venison. We got some of that stuff in right there. I think the better way to spend my time right now would be to get a little bit more hardwood. So I'm going to do just that. And that alone. And nothing more. No further. Just that. And so now that we have a fire all taken care of, let's throw a little bit more up in here. There it is. And so for 12 hours, we should be pretty solid. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to cook up our dinner. I'm going to break off the episode right here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerdcastle for the next episode of The Long Dark. I will see you all in future episodes. Hopefully in the next episode, we'll be able to navigate our way through this zone, find the next zone, and maybe we'll find some useful goodies. I don't know, maybe some furry pantaloons or perhaps some boots to make our way that much easier. Some boots with some mud flaps on them so that we could do some work out on the ranch. Either way, I'll see you all later. Hi, do everybody.